nice to look at. I'm Stephen Cardoza and uh, I am an organic raisin grape grower and my company is Cardoza and Cardoza Farming Company and my family business is Duane Cardoza Ranch in Fresno, California. Uh, the Healthy Soils program is enabling me to conduct uh, this, I guess you'd call it research. It's an experiment, something different that we've never done before. It's kind of um, ad adopting practices I've seen other growers in other parts of the country growing other crops have utilized and kind of custom tailoring it to this ranch. Um, and that includes uh, compost application that I'm leaving just sitting on top of the soil and as well as a mulch application that I'm leaving just sitting on top of the soil. So those are two different things that uh, we've not approached in the past and I'm you know, anxious and curious to see the, the results. I feel like uh, we have the responsibility as, as caretakers of the soil to leave it in a better place than the previous generations, which hasn't been the case unfortunately. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a primary driver and then also uh, I have a connection with my you know, family's land that we've had for a long time and my dad's been organic for a long time so he's always had this attention to nature and the natural processes. So being able to augment that, take it a step further and do something to you know, regenerate soil and uh, make our, our land more fertile and healthier and more resilient uh, in the future is just a really uh, appealing prospect to me. We've been doing cover crops for over 20 years. Uh, we recently shifted from doing every other row to every single row. And the thought process behind that is we've noticed how extremely effective the cover crop is at suppressing weeds. Uh, not only that, but the, the, the fact that there's cover crop in every row now means that we're not disking every other row. So then that's dramatically minimizing our tillage so that we're not having dust cover our vines all the time, which is you know, negatively impactful to their health. The cover cropping is like the tool that I would never take out of my toolbox. Like if you had to take everything else from me, that would be the last thing to go is, is cover cropping. The selection of the seed mix that I'm picking is based on a few things. Uh, the first is I'm always going to have a couple nitrogen fixers just because that's my nitrogen budget for the year. I don't apply nitrogen in any other form other than just the things that I plant to fix the nitrogen out of the air. Uh, the rest of this stuff is all uh, like on a case by case basis. So I might do something different for different ranches depending on what the soil needs are. Uh, but also the fact that I've transitioned into a no-till system where I'm not going to touch this ground until I'm ready to harvest. Uh, I incorporated some daikon radish to try to do some natural form of tillage. Uh, and the rest of the stuff is gonna be like a standard mix thing. So you're gonna have another form of grass or something that's just uh, like a symbiotic relationship with the mix so they grow better together. So the timing of the planting for the cover crop, uh, there's two two variables in my situation. Where we're standing now, I have the ability to flood irrigate. So I'm not really limited by weather patterns and rain in particular. So what I'll do is, as soon as I'm done harvesting, because we had it terraced for the drying process of the raisins, get the ground flat again, and then irrigate it, put the cover crop seed right after. Where I don't have that, and I have a drip line only, then I'm waiting for the first real heavy rainstorm. Not like a drizzle, something that's gonna get water at least a couple inches down into the soil profile. Then I'll do some light tillage, prepare the seed bed, then go in there with the planter and then leave it for the rest of the year. So some people feel like uh, once it starts to go to seed, the cover crops function shifts from putting nutrients into the soil to now taking nutrients out of the soil in order to build its seed, right? Well, whether or not that's true is irrelevant to me because I want the living plant on as much of the ground as I can have, as long as I possibly can have. 
just so that way the root exudates are feeding my biology. I feel like that's really a driving force to all the other uh, pieces that lead to success. So you're gonna have to pick these grapes, you have to put them on the ground, let them sit outside for two, three weeks sometimes, let them dry. So a lot of growers see something like this and they think, there's no way I can dry on this surface. There's no way I can get that perfectly flat. We've determined that if you're mowing regularly and you can get it down to a nice stubble, maybe a month before you're needing to start to prepare your drying surface, it'll decompose on its own, right? And then you can till it two, maybe three times if necessary to accomplish that same drying surface. Because we're, you know, in the same boat as everybody else and we still have to get a perfectly flat drying surface just like everybody else it might be a little bit more work to get there at the end but you're not doing anything throughout the whole year so all those tillage episodes that you would be doing throughout the whole growing season there we have none of those the places that we've been cover cropping the longest we see have the uh, the highest water retention the higher levels of, of soil can retain that moisture instead of just seeping it down uh, below. So I have soil moisture probes and I can track water moving through my soil profile. And places where we've not cover cropped as long, like we just started renting that place, we just bought it recently, the water will pass from turning the pump on to 12 inches deep in six or eight hours. In the places where we have, you know, the built up the soil organic matter, we have been cover cropping for a long uh, time, it takes sometimes over 24 hours to see any type of increase in moisture at a 12 inch depth. Beneficial insect populations, that's a critical piece. So because we've had breakouts of certain things in the past, creating a habitat for the beneficial insects is, is really helpful. Uh, having as much living plants growing over as much soil as possible throughout the year is turning the sunlight into energy for my vines too, right? So the plants that have this unique ability to use something, you know, like the sun, air, water, and provide nutrients and weed suppression to the vines, something that you know, I'd be spending a ton of money uh, to do if I were to manage it myself. You can't quantify what the results are with the number. Like, how is it directly impacting my budget? But what I can say is that uh, it's been the sole form of, of nutritional inputs on several blocks for years, and they've, we've maintained yields. Uh, it's really helped reduce our tillage in terms of weed control because we're an organic system. We can't spray any herbicide. So trying to manage weeds is a particularly challenging task and cover crops, they're, they do a better job, I feel, than any uh, chemical that we could be spraying to try to suppress them. The way this machine works, you have the hydraulic pump powered by a reservoir and pump here running off of the PTO so you don't need to worry about any extra hydraulics on your tractor besides the lateral shifter. What this pump does is it powers an auger. The auger catches the material as the shredder cuts it and then deposits it to the side placing it over the plant line and creating a mulch. The thought process behind that is that I've already seen the suppression of, of cover crops. So this is taking it to the next step further. So it's providing a physical barrier for the weeds to have to grow through, which will suppress them. It's shading the berm, so there's not gonna be sunlight passing that's gonna limit germination and growth as well. And then it's going to help regulate the soil temperature, which is gonna have a, a suppressive effect on the weeds as well. It's pretty thick. I'm a firm believer that if you can promote healthy soil, uh, particularly biologically healthy soil, uh, that that's the most 
uh, impactful piece to your operation. The other piece is I'm, I'm young for a grower, right? I'm in my 30s. So I need to be doing this for another 40 years. And it's my understanding that we're already reaching our limits on certain uh, like soil amendments that we're using. Phosphorus, for instance, they're saying the world's supply is going to run out in 50 to 60 years. So that'll be in my lifetime. So whatever I can do to combat that issue, I'm going to do. Just a, a personal passion of mine. I don't want to see agriculture fail. So I feel like it's important to start preparing for these issues that we're going to be dealing with in the future now and get ahead of the problem the best we can because we've already waited long enough. So I think it's really important for every grower to take a second to, more than a second, to think about their soil as a, a living organism and how to treat it with care and uh, promote its health and uh, you'll see, you'll reap the benefits on uh, other avenues for sure. Mm -hmm.